Greetings, play fans. This old sword with you. Today, we have a another remarkable knife from Blackrock Knives, custom maker Ken Vehikate. This is my second custom from Ken, and my fourth in his line of designs. Very proud to own this knife. He does amazing work. He has come back from a major life event. He had a stroke back about, uh, I guess, about a year ago, or maybe a little less. I'm not sure. I don't keep track of such things to any great detail, but I do know that Ken is working very hard, showing his workout videos on Instagram as well, and how much uh, progress he's making. So. He's able to be making knives again, which is um, really, really remarkable and uh, rewarding for all of us who appreciate his designs. So he um, does his own Kydex, which is a remarkable Kydex. Does great Kydex pressing work. I don't know why I'm showing you the sheath first, but the sheath impresses me. Perfectly form-fitted to the knife, slotted. And he does include a um, metal clip, a belt clip, which can be moved around. It'll situate it down inside the pants uh, straight up. And I believe uh, might be able to be uh, set on an angle as well, although I haven't played with it. I'm going to show you the show side first. This is a chisel ground knife. So it's ground on one side. There's his maker mark. He recently changed uh, the design, and by the way, this is the Voodoo. So there is your Voodoo doll with a pin in the head. <laughs> Nasty little thing. It's on the flat. And uh, he changed it recently to where he uh, has been trying to reinforce the tip more. Not that there was a problem with the tip, but he's, you know, he's pretty tough on the knives, and uh, he wants them to hold up. So. We've got a longer flat in here, a wider flat, than he had used previously on this model. And this is one of the first where he is uh, running his texture on this wide flat along here. I'll show you another one of his customs in a moment where you can see some of the difference in how he was doing it before. We have texture all throughout the uh, G10 handle. And this is an interesting color combo. So this is like a forest green. And I'm not sure how much the color is going to come across on the video. That's like a forest green, a little brighter than uh, like an army green. And uh, this is kind of a gray blue. I would call it, uh, under my lights here, I would call it kind of a greenish gray. Let's not call it a blue, kind of a greenish gray. One of those odd colors that it's kind of hard to uh, to nail it down. We have some really nice jimping here that looks like it could be tough on the thumb, but it's really not. Um, these would work great with gloves. It's a very thin uh, handle profile. And there that uh, texturing runs all the way around. With a bird's beak style, which is a Filipino style, by the way. Um, handle. Whether Ken intended it to be that or not, I'm not sure. But what that does is on the drawback, this keeps this locked in the hand. And you can see through that finger uh, groove there and this rearward almost finger groove, your hand is locked in. And uh, I have medium large hands and there's a little bit left over so it's not a tight fit but I can move around a little bit and uh, cap the pommel and throw it into a perfect point down position as well. See if I can pull back a little bit. Okay. You don't want other things to steal the scene. So yeah, this side's completely flat. The edge is quite sharp and um, it 
may not behave in quite the same way as a double ground knife, but for its intended purpose, which is, let's face it, tactical in combat and self-defense, this is not meant to be a, a hunting knife to, uh, to skin something with, although I'm sure you could get away with that. It's a rather steep grind here and um, fairly shallow grind here, but I'm telling you, I strop this just a little bit and uh, running my finger across there, it'll shave hair. And uh, it's a little more aggressive than the way I got it after my stropping, which is kind of the way I like my edges. Um, got a hole here. Kind of looks like a bird. You could use that hole to uh, position the handle, although um, I wouldn't. You can definitely run a lanyard through there. Let's do this. We'll do some quick specs. Then we'll uh, take some more looks at the uh, beauty of this business-like blade. Nine and a quarter overall length. The blade is, I'm going to call it four and three quarters. Maybe it's a skosh more, right to the handle. Cutting edge is, um, I'm going to call that 3.4. Blade stock in millimeters, 3.1. Let's make sure I'm getting it where I want to get it. The texturing can throw me off a little bit. 3.2. And getting to thickness of the handle in inches, it's going to be quite thin. Half an inch. So for a fixed blade, that is relatively slim. That means it's going to ride tight to the body. It's not going to bulge out. And uh, it's a beautiful balance of usability, perfect length. Uh, some of you like them a little bit shorter. In that case, you might be carrying something like the Street Beat by Spyderco. Here's a little comparison. So you can see that the um, Street Beat is a significantly shorter knife, so you may like something this size. You may find the Voodoo to be a bit on the, the big side. Let's see, of course my scale is off yonder. Let's grab that scale. It's a pretty light knife. So I'm going to give you the weight with and without the sheath. Of course, it would help to turn the scale on first. And we have uh, 4.8 ounces of the knife alone. And with the sheath, nice lock up on the sheath, we have 6.99, call it 7 ounces. So, um, beautiful sheath, you can push it off. It's got a pretty good friction on it, but it is not a tight sheath. You could pull this out when you needed to, but it's very secure inside of it. You notice he uses rivets that are actually made from G10, as far as I know, different color G10 usually. Um, a quick compare with my first. This is the virus. You see the biohazard symbol on there. Now you see the texturing here and the way you work the grind. This is a Pakal knife meant to thrust and rip backwards inward moving action and I won't get too into the whole technique or technology of it but what we would um, in the Filipino martial arts we would refer to that as a sock sock knife or a thrusting knife so a thrusting and a ripping knife 
they're completely two different styles as you can see and um, pretty much the same handle thickness um, same blade stock as uh, far as I know and both of these are 01 so this is an 01 tool steel that can um, profiles grinds and hardens himself and the specifics are I think he's said they're coming in around 59 Rockwell I believe I asked him once and he did tell me but they're two totally different animals they're made with the same sort of craftsmanship with the same uh, detailing but two totally different purposes now Ken has licensed some designs to Fox and here is one of those this is the Ryu RYU this is a traditional Tonto style blade and obviously much longer and larger than the Voodoo. Made by Fox in Italy. And for comparison, there is the virus. Let's see if we can get them all down in the frame here. So three knives, uh, kind of meant for tactical purpose, meant for trouble, meant to be effective when you need them to be. Um, I would say the the Voodoo is a good length. It's uh, coming up close to five inches. Um, you may more like more like three and a half, four. But this is going to be a large knife, and this is going to be thicker and heavier. This is made from uh, Niolox steel, which has niobium in it. Um, I have a review on this, so does Bob DeMarco. And Bob uh, took one of these as a giveaway for on his channel as well. This is just a real solid in the hand, comfortable, larger knife. The Voodoo is gonna be lighter, much quicker in the hand, and um, as far as holding it goes, I mean, you can get right out here on this top edge. It's one of the reasons I'm glad the top edge is not sharpened because I do like to do reinforced cuts and manage the blade. If I can back out again a little bit and manage the blade more in the Filipino tradition. Now, that's narrow, but that, there's a flat there. It's not going to cut you may press into your thumb a little bit and all of these knives are great with gloves too by the way so if you prefer tactical gloves or you just uh, have outdoor gloves that are keeping your hands warm um, this will fit right in beautifully it may feel even slightly more secure because it does have kind of that thin profile so O1 one tool steel completely handmade custom knife Ken Vihikate black rock knives some really nice workmanship here. He makes it look primitive, makes it look ancient, but it has modern day precision and materials. So that's the Black Rock Voodoo. And we'll uh, finish out by dropping the uh, virus, kind of its counterpart into the shot as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. We'll be back with more. I'll drop you a link to Ken's Instagram and uh, some other relevant information into the comments. Don't forget to go uh, visit his page and check out some of his work as the photos of his work are amazing. We'll be back with you soon. This Old Sword, signing out.